Hello guys, before I get started on this video, I just have to say an RIP to my friend Caroline Johnson, who lost her battle with cancer. Caroline was Jax's mum. Remember I had Jax on the show with me a couple of weeks ago? That was his mum. You know, as I said, she lost her battle with cancer, you know, at 42 years old. And this happened, you know, over such a short period of time it was like the time was just you know we you know it, it was just a matter of weeks literally you know one minute she, you know we found out that she wasn't feeling well and she couldn't eat and next thing she, virtually she's dead so you know all of us are you know are really broken up over it because she was a massive part of a lot of our lives and she was one of those people if she's in a room you know she's in there you know so, so i'll just say it's r.i.p to my friend Caroline Johnson, who will be really, really sadly missed. And, you know, if um, if you guys, if you know, if you feel anything, you know, any lump or you're not feeling, make sure that you're heading to your doctors, you know, to, um, to get yourself checked out because it's always worth that visit. I know we're having a lot of problems in this country, but it's always worth that visit, you know, to try and see, and if you can see what's, find out what's wrong with you. And welcome back to Regrets It, Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, my goodness. Oh, actually, we have, we've got the worst, I don't know if you've seen the worst forest fires that they've got in Hawaii, that they've ever had in Hawaii. We've had um, six migrants die in the Channel. Without London, the UK would be poorer than Mississippi. Junior doctors are in the middle of a four day strike. 7.8 million people on the waiting list. 27,000 people apply for NHS dentists. We have an MP who has shares in, in, a, in, in one of the utility companies, but forgot. And nearly 80% of the people in the UK are not happy because this country is a misogynistic, bigoted, xenophobic, racist shithole. And welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. A special thanks to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that have signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can. But I will like all your messages for definite. So we're going straight over to um, the US, Hawaii, Maui, in fact. right? Where just, just under 100 people right, so far have been confirmed dead, right, in these wild fires, right? Now, I, I looked at these fires, right, and I thought to myself, I found something really strange, because the sea is right there, right? Literally, the sea's right there. People run into the sea to keep safe. I think, well, how the hell have you got all that water there, and you've got all that shit that burnt down, which is which is just literally yards away. So how, 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 has that, how has that worked? You know, I mean, this it is their worst fire for, I don't know how long for, but it's, it's their worst ever, right? But if, it, if this has ever happened there at any stage, right, in the last 200, no, 100 years, well, 200 years, because what, America's what, 250 years, isn't it? So 200 years. If that's if, if that happened there, right? You'd think that they would have proper defenses to say, you know what, it's getting too hot, right? Let us just all the water. Let's just get as much water off there, so so we keep that area completely moist. Because you know that that's what it takes. It takes for areas to be moist. If it's moist, it can't catch a fire, right? You know. But when when things dry completely out, that's when it happens. And you think, how the hell is the water there, right? And you've let all of that, and nearly a hundred people so far. That's just so far because obviously, you know, it's, it's, you know they're still going through. They're, you know, they've got the specialist dogs and all those things, but they're still going through all the ashes and all that. So these these numbers are going to increase a lot. I think I would think. You know, I don't know how much by, but it's going to increase a lot. You know, um, but you know, I think there's still people on holiday in Hawaii because obviously this is going to be a certain part. So you know, the other parts of, of Hawaii, there's still people on holiday, believe it or not. And we have had. Um, just over the weekend, I think was it was it Friday or or Saturday? We had six migrants die in the um in our channel, 
right? And I think they're still looking for maybe. I think they still might be looking for a couple. And fifty of fifty people, I think over fifty people were saved, right? By with by a combination of the French and the British um, RNLI. You know, so you know, but um, I don't know. You know, it's this the small boat crisis. Yeah, has come about because of Brexit. There's no doubt in that. Right. We never had boats before 2016. People used to jump on the back of lorries or, or you know, they'd, they'd climb onto a train you know, to, to come through the um, Euro tunnel. But we never, ever had... There was nothing about boat people. In fact, right, you, you know, they were talking, oh, yeah, because you know why they don't come over like that? Because it's too dangerous. It's the... You know, it's the, it's the, um, it's the, it's the busiest shipping lane in the world. Right? Too dangerous. That's why they, that's what they used to say before. But that was before we Brexited, right? And we said to the French, piss off. Because, you know, we don't, you know, we are better than you. So we don't need to be in any type of union with you. And, you know, it's amazing that, because I was watching on GMB this morning, I was watching Ben Habib, and he, you know, he talks a lot of shit. And, he, you know, I look at people like that, Ben Habib, right? And I think, do these people actually realise, right, that the people who they are trying to impress, right, would send Ben Habib, Rishi Sunak, you know, um, Suella Braveman, Priti Patel to Rwanda if they had half a chance? Those very same people who these people are trying to impress with their right wing views, right, would send those people to Rwanda just as quickly as they'd want to send me to Rwanda. <laughs> That's what I don't understand about these days, about people like Ben Habib and all these, you know, and and because you've got a lot of um, you've got a lot of Asians who are right wing, you know, and very far right wing. You think <laughs> you do know that these people that you're trying to impress hate you, but they don't. Somehow they don't. Yeah. So Ben, I'm listening to Ben Habib this morning, and you know, because you know that Britain has been paying the French. I think we're up to something like 400 and something million now that we're paying the French. And the French are just like, yes, we will, we will help you so much. We will do everything we can to help. While helping the boats, while, you know, helping the boats to get to, get to our borderline, right, in the channel, right? And then, no, you know, the French, you could literally see the French just looking and saying, yep, um, we can see the, the RNLI just coming to help them now. Right, so we can take off, right, and go and escort another small boat right up to right up to the, the, the borderline again. Why should the French, right? The French I don't know, you know, the French probably take in more people than us anyway. But you know, they 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 uh, the French the French, I think, they knock back around seventy five percent of their applicants, the people that apply to stay in France. They knock back a lot. More, even though they, you know, they might, they, they might, I think they, you know, they might, you know, put a, a lot more through the numbers, right, through, through the system, sorry, they might put a lot more through the system than we do, virtually everyone in the world does, put more people in, through the system, I mean, you've got poor, you've got poorer countries, like, but you know, countries like Turkey and people like that, now these people are taking millions Absolute of millions right, of of refugees, right, asylum seekers, you know, millions, right? And you know, we've got about a couple of thousand of these people. Oh my God, I've been invaded! All these blinking black and brown people coming up here, invaded! It's an invasion. I I believe yeah that a couple of these people right in this the, in this boat right. I believe some of them was Af from Afghanistan. Now, what does that say to you? We've been bombing the fuck out of Afghanistan for how long? For how long? Do we, 20 years we bombed the fuck out of that country, right? I've always said this, right? The one thing the people in this country yeah, have got for black and brown people is bombs and bullets. When it comes to shell, they're like, oh, no. Oh, no. You can just tell that, right? By places like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, America, right? All stolen countries, right? All of these, right, are these from this far right, Britain and the rest of the Europeans. 
far right, right, have gone to these countries, right, murdered all the inhabitants. This is the reason why these people are always like, oh God, look, look, these people are trying to replace us because they have replaced people. They've done that in the past. They've replaced people in the past. And that's why they, that's why they always say, oh, well, the people want to replace us. The Jews will not replace us. You will not replace us. Because they have done that. They've replaced people, right? You know, in America, they replace people. In New, in New Zealand, they replace people. In Canada, they replace people. In Australia, they replace people, right? And what have all those countries got in common? Just like this one right here. Oh, no, you can't come in. Don't come in. Oh, you can't come in. We don't want you coming in. They go and steal countries. Australia's got fucking farms bigger than Britain. And these people right, are the most racist motherfuckers on the face of the earth. No one's more racist than the Australians. No one. Right? And Britain's, Britain's coming up very close behind. Right? But these countries, stolen countries, replaced all the people in these countries. Murderous. Replacing all these people. Right? But yet for all, they said, well, no, you can't come here. We don't want you to come here. Not allowed. No. If only the Aborigines had done the same thing. They just murdered them, you see. And we've got like, um, on the, you know, I don't know if you've seen the story with the BB Stockholm, where you've got, um, where they've started moving people on. Now, I mean, you know, firstly, right, you know, firstly, right, I haven't got a problem with them putting people on a barge, right? But I have got a problem with them cramming people on the barge because that barge is built for something like 220 people, right? And they want to put over 500 people on there. So also a lot of the, um, a lot of the, you know, a lot of areas that are for, probably should be for socialising, they have obviously want to change into cabins and things like that, you know, and then they want to double up on all the rooms, which, you know, I don't know, you know, they might put, they might put people in together that, that don't get on. And then, you know, you, you you have incidents there where, you know, where you've got people are in the same room. It's like, you know, you're putting two people in a cell and they don't get on because these, these things are not, not much bigger than this. I don't think they're much bigger than a police cell and they've got two people in them with, with bunk beds or whatever. So it's not going to be much space. There's not, you know, and apparently they've decommissioned all the TVs and that, that's in the rooms and all that. And then you've got like, you've got a community, you've got a gym on there and a communal area with a TV and all that. But, you know, what happens if you want to watch like, you know, EastEnders or Coronation Street and someone else wants to watch something else? You would one big TV. Do you know what I mean? You know, and you've got 500 different, you've got 500 and something different people on there. You know, they're not, they're not all going to, obviously they can't all fit in the communal areas anyway at one time because, they've, you know, they've, they've taken away a lot of it. As I said, I've got no problem in them putting people on there, but I've got a problem with them ramming people on there. That is a problem. You know, in the same way, I haven't got a problem where, where you know, 30p Lee said, you know what, if you don't like it, you go, fuck off. I ain't got a problem with that because you know if I was giving someone the lift home and they said and they and then they started complaining about my car, I said, well, you know something, I'll stop the car and say, get the fuck out. You can fuck off. Right? You know, someone comes to your party, right, and they say, Well, I don't like the party. I could have went to a better one. You'd be like, Well, fuck off to the better fucking party then, wouldn't you? Right? So yeah, that's the type of language that that we use. But that's not the type of language a politician should be using, especially the chairman of the of the Tory party. That's not the type of language they should be using. But he's using that type of language because he knows, it, you know, it goes down well for you know for the you know the the um, uneducated that the Tories always need to vote for them, right, to keep in power because that's the only way the Tories can stay in power by getting right the uneducated um, working classes in this country to say, oh, you know. Hmm. Well, well, you know, basically the Tories say nice things to them about immigration, like we're going to stop the boats or we're going to put people on barges or send them to Rwanda or Ascension Island. Ascension Island, this is just really... You know, about 900 people live on Ascension Island. Say, so, well, you're going to flood it with... <sighs> but anyway, you know, the, all of those things, they're playing well with the, with the far right. But, you know, as they say, the BB Stockholm now... Again, we've got Legionnaire's disease that has that has taken foot on... That has, that, sorry, the Legionnaire's... Um, virus that has been found on the um on there it hasn't turned into, it hasn't turned into legionnaire disease yet but um they found legionnaire the legionnaire virus on there and um that just doesn't that sound like some type of european maybe french 
Why did why is the EU sending us all over their stuff all the still? <laughs> right. Anyway, right. Do you know, right, that is why is it, right, that they've found the need to pay one point six billion pounds to a Australian company to run the BB Stockholm? Why? I mean, literally, they could have just said, you know what, what we'll do, right, is we're going to get ourselves, um, I don't know, you know, as I said, it should only have 220 people on it, firstly, right? But so they, you know, they get themselves, well, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 um, ex prison guards or soldiers or whatever, do you know what I mean? Or, you know, people who do that type of security work or whatever, and just pay them to do it, right? Rather than give a massive contract of £1.6 billion to an Australian company to run a brought down old piece of shit, right? When they could have got right, the Royal Yachts, Royal Yacht Caribbean, not, not sorry, not sorry, the Caribbean, uh, what's that, that cruise line that goes around the Caribbean? They could have, that holds over 5,000 people. They could have hired that, right, for two years, Right, because I think that's what this contract is. For two years, they're going to hide that for 600 million. With staff and all that fancy food. 600 million. And they say, well, how the fuck, right, are we paying an Australian company 1.6 billion pounds to hold 500 people? I mean, that... That accommodation, yeah, turns out to be some of the most expensive accommodation in Britain. Because, I mean, you're looking at, like, what, £1,100 a night to stay on there. £1,100 a night to stay on there. I mean, you say, well, you could have just got yourself, like, you know, 20 or 30 security guards, right, to, to look after it, right? You know, to directly working, you know, directly working for the for the home office or whatever to look after it, right? And you know, pay them three grand, three grand a month each. I mean, can you see the saving? And you have to wonder why these people do this shit. But they do this shit, yeah, because you know, even though we might think it's an Australian company, it could well be. Yeah, it probably well be like a brick behind the back at the back of it. Because you know, a lot of lords and I mean, isn't that where isn't that where Murdoch lives? So, you know, a lot of very important, you know, a lot of these people, they live, you know, because these guys, you know, they live in the best parts of the world, right? So, you know, so but they want to run business. They want to run their business in this country. But yeah, so, you know, just like 1.6 billion. Without London, the UK would be poorer than Mississippi. Do you understand what that means? I don't think no one knows what's in my mind right now. I guarantee you, you know something in my mind right now. Mississippi is a is virtually a black state. That means Great Britain is finally a black country. We are poorer than Mississippi. And let me tell you, yeah, don't even tell me no. Bullshit about that's not down to Brexit because that's got Brexit right smiling right in it. In fact, Brexit's clapped it in the face as to the reason why without London, Britain would be poorer than Mississippi, the poorest state in the US of A. It's the reason why, yeah, that Britain has to pay you know businesses to stay in this country because it's a shithole. So now that to pay. They have to pay, pay businesses. Tata, pay them five hundred million pounds to set up here. I mean, you know, if you had a great economy, yeah, you wouldn't be need to do that. If your economy was fantastic, you would never need to do that. You would need to pay someone. To come. come on, that's like you. That's like a night. That's like a nightclub saying to people, you know, we'll pay you to we'll pay you to come in this nightclub, yeah. So what kind of fucking night are you running? Do you got to pay me to come to your nightclub? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Shouldn't I be paying to get into the nightclub? Shouldn't it be like that? Right? You know, taxi drivers, you know, taxi drivers, you know, stopping and saying, well, look, um, if I give you a tenner, can I drop you home? Hey. All right, then. <laughs> All right. Would you like to stop at a sh shop and get me like maybe a Lucasade or a Ribena as well? And a packet of fags as well. I mean, 
Just, you know, shopkeepers calling you into the shop and saying, listen, come in, man, come in, look, look, look take this, take these beans and, 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 and these sausage and this bread. Take those, man. You, go, go about your business. That's not how shit works. Shit don't work like that. That's some reverse shit. When you've got to pay people to come. Listen, without London, the powerhouse, the United Kingdom would be poorer than poorer to Mississippi. And if you want to tell me that's not that, that that's not Brexit, right? I'm going to tell you that's Brexit. Woo! Junior doctors, I believe they're in the middle of a four day strike at the moment. And you see, remember when I said, right, that 80% of the people in the UK are not happy? If you notice all those stories, apart from the one from Hawaii, right, confirm why people are not happy in this country. Right? When we've got junior doctors in the middle of a four day strike, right, and Steve Barclay has refused to negotiate with the striking doctors while they've got, while the Australians, right, are sending round vans. Where the strikers are, they're sending round vans, right. Come and work in paradise. We welcome all that medical staff to come and work in paradise. On a van, just driving past where all the strikes are. Right? And these people, all they want to do is fight with the doctors. You know, you know if you notice, right, with the politicians, with the politicians, when it comes to them, they're like, oh, no, we, we need more money because we need to attract the brightest and the best. So we need more money. But when it comes down to the doctors or the nurses and the teachers, they're like, Oh no, they're getting far too much already. How dare they want more? Who the fuck do these people think they are? For, but for them, oh no, we need, we need, to, we need to raise the, our wages so we can get the brightest and the best. Even though, yeah, every single doctor, nurse, right, and teacher are brighter than any fucking politicians in this country. They are more educated than these fuckers. And these pricks right want to tell people oh um you know you are you're asking for too much how dare you even ask for more while well, you've got a prime minister who's got 700 million pounds and you know the reason why nearly 80 percent of the people are not happy in this country and could you imagine if you had a business on the high street and 80% of the people on the high street didn't like your business. How long do you think you'd be there for? The only thing that there could be 80% disapproval rating in, right, is politics. Nothing else. Nothing else. You could have an 80% disapproval rating in. Nearly. 80%. No other industry, no other business, right? Nothing else could put up with that apart from our House of Parliament and our House of Lords. Nowhere else, only in the Palace of Westminster, this shit can go on where 80% of the people are pissed, not happy. And you know why? Because 7.8 million people are on the waiting NHS waiting list. 7.8 million. And those numbers are just going to go up and up. Right? And now, right, these people, oh, you know, they're inviting, I believe, people from Scotland and from, and from Wales, right, to come and use the English um, NHS. And they say, oh, yeah, because the Labour-run uh, you know, Labour um, Welsh NHS is terrible. It's absolutely... And they're comparing England and Wales. Now... I don't, what, what has Wales got? Four, four or five million people? As opposed to England itself, right? England's probably got what? Because Scotland's got three, three million. So England's probably got 60 million. So it's not even a comparison. Do you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's a complete different comparison, but they're trying to do that. And now they're trying to bring down the Labour Party with not saying, oh, well, we're inviting people from Wales to come onto our waiting list in England. Say, really? How the fuck is that going to work then? Because you've already got 7.8 fucking million people, right? And nearly 80% of the people are not happy in this absolute racist, xenophobic, bigoted, anti-Semitic, homophobic, transphobic, Shithole. People are not happy. And you know why? 
because 27,000 people contacted a dentist who offered 60 NHS places. They said it's going to be the first 20 on the phone, the first 20 on, I think, on must be on, on some type of message, but, and then the first 20 who queue up. Over 100 people was queuing up outside. 27,000 people, in fact, contacted this dentist. 27,000 people for 60 places. That's why the people in this country think it's an absolute shithole. Because that's what's going on. And I'll tell you another reason why. Because you've got someone like Therese Villas, right, who's got, what, £70,000 of shares in Shell, right, while she was an environment minister, undeclared. She forgot. It's an oversight. I couldn't remember. I don't know. Can't keep hold of all these things. Right? The dog must have ate it. I dropped it on the way to the Houses of Parliament. Right? And they're just like, yeah, this is, uh, it's just shit happens, doesn't it? These people are working against us. That's what they're doing. They're working against us. She's in the House of Parliament. Right, she has she right has control over these type of companies. You're environment minister. You've got control over these type of companies. Right, you can you know do you know there's certain there's certain things that you can say. Well, mm, no, that's uh, we can't let you know. We can't um, we can't stop them from doing that. Oh no, that wouldn't be a good. That wouldn't be a good idea because it's in your own interest. You got seventy fucking thousand pounds in there, and in the great scheme of things, that might not be very much. But you know. But, but for her not to declare it, right? And she sat there in, right, in the cabinet, and she's not declared it. And you say, how much of them are getting up to this type of bullshit? And this is why in this country that you know nearly eighty percent of the people are not happy because you've got people like Baroness Moan who skipped off with like thirty or forty million pounds, right, and just going all around the world on her fucking yacht in a bikini. And then this morning I heard another story about <coughs> a Tory councillor who got two hundred and I think it was two hundred and seventy million, two hundred something like two hundred and seventy six million, right? And now, right, he's um, owes the taxman something like five million pounds, right? But you know, they, they, and he's just boasted and said, you know what, the pandemic, I done very well out of the pandemic. Didn't supply the NHS with what they were supposed to supply them with. Right, virtually has skipped off with that money, bought themselves three properties in between, you know, in in between, and all this stuff. You know, seriously, this is and and there's and they'll still say to the people like the nurses and doctors, "Oh no, because you're greedy." The mere fact, right, that these people are allowed to get away with this bullshit just speaks volumes of how thick and stupid the people in this country really are. Because they could only get away with this right, because people keep voting for these clowns. Right? You wouldn't get away with this if, you know, you can't get away with this if they don't vote for these clowns. They get away with this, right, and, you know, there's no ethics with these guys. And, I mean, you know, you know I, it, this will never change because... It's not in their interest to change it. None of this is not in their interest to change none of it. So it will never change. Things will never change. They will always be funneling money, right, that's supposed to be in their economy, right, into their friends and their donors and, you know, their cat, whether they you know. Because remember, they had, a, that, that, they had a special list, right, for the PPE, right, the fast track list or whatever. And, you know, obviously you had to know somebody to get onto that list, so he's a Tory councillor, so that's why he could get on there. Baroness Moan is a, you know, she's, you know, she's a baroness. That's why she could get on there, because they could get on that list. They could get access to it. You or I could not get access to that list. They could get access to it. And these people have stolen hundreds of billions of pounds. These people are thieves, right? They're cheats, right? And, you know, when, you know when they're, they're going to get away with it, because you know what? There is no one overlooking them to, to, to say, well, you know, you know what, this is, this is bang out of order. And let's speak about some Brexit, because look how far I'm on this video. I'm only 30 minutes, virtually 30 minutes in. Let's speak about some Brexit. The new statesman, Adam Possan, says Brexit is, is a UK trade war on itself. 
He gets paid the big bucks, right? Yeah. Why do these people get paid to tell us the fucking obvious? Or the bloody obvious? These people, right, are some patronising dicks. <laughs> Right, I don't know what this guy's politics is, right? But you know what? You don't have to point that out to us, right? Because I've been saying that from day one. No one pays me the big bucks. These guys get paid the big bucks to point at the fucking obvious. Right? Like the you other know, week, we had a Tory politician say to say, "Oh well, you know the over fifties, you know they should get off their bike. You know they need to get on a bicycle and go and deliver and go and deliver some um, some takeaway takeaway meals and all those type of things to make up a little bit of extra cash." And I was like, that way, and then that way. Are these people fucking serious? People who, I've had, you know what, people over 50 who have come and dropped fucking food at my house or dropped parcels at my house. You think people don't know this shit? Right? Or the fact when they say, oh, people must realise that, you, you know, you don't have to buy Heinz beans. Well, you do actually. You know, you don't have to buy that. You know, you could buy the home brand. I wouldn't. But you, have, you can buy the home brand. Say, why the fuck are you pointing out the obvious? You think we don't know that, you know, that, that Tesco's have got their own brand of fucking fish fingers? You think we don't know Tesco's have got their own fucking brand of bread? Or Asda have got their own fucking brand, you know, of, of orange juice? Right? You think we don't know that Morrison's has their own brand of fucking tin tomatoes? These people get paid the big money to point out the fucking obvious. Just like this, Mr. Possad, right, with his, bre with his Brexit nonsense. Of course, it's a trade war on ourselves. Who else would it be on? Right? It's called right, self inflicted. Remember him from Minder? Self inflicted. Cut to bits. Done it all himself. Right? Self inflicted. Right? You know, Brexit is cutting off both hands and both foots. Right? You know, from the ankle. Not from the knee. Come on. <laughs> not from the knee. You know, you know, you know, not the arm from the elbow. That's gonna come for a few it's gonna come in a few years. When it's gonna get to that point. Right? That's why right, we are poor, right? That's why we are black. Britain is a black country. Poorer than motherfucking Mississippi. <sighs> Sotheby's owner, and who feels sorry for the owner of Sotheby's? Raise your hand. Nobody. You people have no heart. Right? You need to be more woke. Yeah, I didn't raise my hand either because you know what? Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing as you. Who the fuck cares, right? You know, the Sotheby's, you know, th their profits are down. And this man says it's due to Brexit. Yeah, you know, that you know, there's a you know, the you know the um art world is feeding it. Yeah, the art world where they're paying like 2.7 million pounds for fucking painting while there's people starving. Piss off, Mr. Sotheby's, yeah. You can, you know what? I don't even know why they're telling us about, about Sotheby's. Right? I don't even know why they're telling us about Sotheby's. But whatever it is, it's taking the piss. Boris Johnson has blasted Rishi Sunak's Brexit deal as being still in the EU's gravitational pull. You know, Boris Johnson should shut his mouth, right? You know, I was reading an article from Boris Johnson on the weekend, right? And underneath, you know, the, you know they've got the comment section underneath, right? Underneath, right, every single person was just slagging him off. Everybody was just... They, 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 no one was actually answering, right, what he was speaking about. Whatever the article was about, no one was speaking about that. Everyone was just slagging him off. Because that's his reputation. I mean, you know, I don't know how comes Nigel Farage hasn't got that reputation yet. But Nigel Farage should have exactly the same reputation. It should be, you know, they, these people's reputation should be absolutely, you know. Because remember when Jacob Rees Mogg said, you know, uh, you'll, uh, you know, you'll get cheap food. Does food prices look like it's cheaper to you? Cheap food, but no. But what he meant was more expensive. That's when he said cheap. He said, no, I mean, I meant cheap, but I actually meant more expensive. I said cheap, but I meant more expensive. It's just like taking absolute piss. Half of UK voters want a referendum 
in the next decade. I say a referendum on what? What to go back in the EU? See these people, see these, these people, yeah. I don't know if they know what they've lost, right? Obviously, I think they're finding out now what exactly what they've lost. But they have lost, you know, this country has lost so much. You know, this country is officially black because it is poorer than Mississippi, okay? So this country has lost so much. And why? Why? Because you had people who have convinced the people of this country, right, that they would be better off leaving, right, you know, an institute that, that holds some of the richest people in the world. And, you know, I mean, you know what it's down to. I don't need to say it. And I'm not going to say it. Anyway, guys, look, I'm going to wrap this up now because um, I'm, I'm, I've gone over quite a bit on this video. I'm not going to say how, how long I've gone over, but I've gone over quite a bit. So I'm going to wrap this up now. But tomorrow is my birth. I'll be back tomorrow because tomorrow is my birthday. So I will be back tomorrow because tomorrow's the fifth. Tomorrow will be the fifteenth of August. Today the fourteenth. So tomorrow will be the fifteenth of August, which is my birthday. So I will be back doing a video tomorrow, my friends. This is by any means necessary. I'm the MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.